If you're looking to design something that will get you a paid commission and actually get you noticed in the architecture industry, well, today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to do that. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how to create something absolutely stunning. It is a very simple architectural project with a few very minor details that make it stand out and look incredible. You guys are more than welcome to use this for any of your projects, any of your presentations, or use it for whatever you like. I just wanna show you exactly how it can be done in ArcCAD 24. If you like being part of a community and absolutely love exclusive content, I've created a Patreon link just down below where you can join my exclusive Discord chat. It is filled with exclusive content where I talk to you guys about upcoming architectural projects in the real world, talk about the design, talk about the budget and the client brief as well. We really try to talk between each other to improve all these architectural projects and every so often I jump on there and help you guys with your projects too. So if that's something that interests you, there's a bunch of links down below, check them out and let's get on with today's video. Okay, so today I wanted to test out this new vertical format side by side with the ArcCAD video. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this format versus the previous format where I'm just a little floating head down the bottom. I really wanted to engage with you guys a lot more during this video, so I thought this was potentially the best way to do it. So I have ArchiCAD 24 open in front of me. I've just opened up the Australian residential template. I've done absolutely nothing to it. It is the standard template you get when you open up ArchiCAD. What we're gonna to do today is create a unique cabin chalet and it's gonna be wrapped with the same cladding from the walls all the way up with secret gutters. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that in hopefully less than 30 minutes. Once you've got ArcCAD 24 open, we're gonna start straight away by pressing Command and 7 or Control and 7 depending on what system you're on. The ground floor is critical. The next height in this instance is 2475. We're gonna do it at a timber frame. The first floor is non-existent. It's gonna be straight away into the roof because this is gonna be a one-story design. What we're also gonna to wanna to do is insert something below and insert our footings, which I've completely spelt wrong. So let me try to spell that properly. Our footings need to be 172 millimeters deep. That's approximately the thickness of the slab that is gonna go underneath. The slab will be 100 plus some thickenings at the edges, depending on what we go for and if it's slab on ground. But for the time being, we're going 172. We're also gonna untick all of these on the side so we don't have anything show up in elevations later down the track. Okay, so we can click okay. Some stories may be deleted. You will get this error message because we've deleted that first floor plan. Not a problem, just click delete anyway. So we wanna go into our view map, find sketch design, and then go down into sketch plans and click on our minus one footings layer. So this is where we're gonna create our slab and kind of understand what our building is gonna look like. I'm thinking it's gonna be a really nice elongated design with a protruding element on the front. So maybe some bedroom wings, a living wing. It's just gonna be a very simple chalet design. So in that instance, I'm gonna grab the slab tool here, make sure it's on our slab general layer because we want it to be on the slab layer. Layers are very important when you document later down the track in ArchiCAD. Doesn't matter if it's 24, 22, 21, ArchiCAD layers are critical. We wanna go ahead straight away and change all of these model override surfaces to black because we're gonna do a full black design in this instance. So let's go paint and link all of these together. Now at the same time, it needs to be about 100 millimeters thick and we're gonna make it concrete. So if you just tap C, it'll quickly jump to concrete. You don't actually have to look through this list to find concrete, so I quickly tap C on my keyboard and it will just jump through the concrete elements. So I've clicked on concrete, that's corrugated roofing. Let's try again, concrete structural. I've made it 100 millimeters thick and I've made it project zero minus 100. So that means it's gonna sit exactly where the ground floor level starts. Let's start right in the middle of the screen. It doesn't really matter where we start and start creating our design. I think it'd be nice to have a pretty elongated design somewhere about that 25 meter mark by about oh, six meters could probably do the trick, which will give us decently sized bedrooms, decently sized hallways and everything in between. So let's go 25 meters by six meters long. And then on that same instance, what we're gonna do is click Control E, and then we're gonna tap Control again to bring up the Multiply tool. So clicking anywhere in the center, we click once, we hold Shift to get 
a perfectly horizontal line. We click again, rotate around, holding shift once more to get a 90 degree line, and we have our centerpiece. So what we're gonna do in this instance is just drag that, and potentially if you hover over it, you're gonna see these two lines pop up, which means I can click Control D to select the center of this line and keep hovering over this until that secondary line appears so I know exactly where the center is of that elongated slab that I've just created. I don't think this slab needs to be this far out, it doesn't need to protrude that far. So what I'm gonna do is click on this edge just once and go to offset edges. Not offset all edges, just offset edges. I'm gonna bring it back in line with the edge of this house and then I'm gonna click Control D and move it to the top. So by doing so, I've created two spaces around the house. I've created that elongated shape at the bottom, but now I wanna merge that slab together. So I'm gonna click on that original elongated slab, click on one of the corners, and make sure I click Add to Polygon, the little plus sign with the papers. And then all I'm gonna do is hover over this secondary square holding space, and you're gonna notice this hammer looking tool or magic wand, if you're more familiar with Photoshop, that's gonna highlight that entire box so we can just click on that once and it will automatically fill that space. So now I can go back in and delete that additional square that we created before. There's a number of ways to do that step just there and create multiple slabs, but that one's just a very simple, easy one to do. Okay, so now what we have to do is jump back to our ground floor plan. So when we build our walls, they're on the right layer. If we double click on ground floor plan and then right click on our footings, we can go show trace reference layer so we don't lose our guidance points. If we then come across to our wall tool in the top left hand corner, make sure our walls are on walls external. Remember again, walls and layers, layers are critical in ArcCAD, so continue to keep an eye on your layers, especially if you're working in a team because it's gonna drive people crazy when it's on the wrong layer. Then we're gonna select a wall type. In this instance, I'm just gonna go a 90 mil stud partition. It's not really too important because this is a theoretical project. And then we're just gonna click once on the corner, which is our starting point. We could go down along the page so it runs inside the slab, which is the correct way our timber frame wall would actually go. But then if we go right, you'll see it's on the wrong way around of that slab. So if we just tap the P button on the keyboard, it'll flip that. So if I just keep tapping flip P, you'll see it flipping. I want it to be on the inside of the slab, so the edge of the slab and the edge of that timber wall are lined up perfectly. And then all I'm gonna do is hold shift, click around that entire slab that we created before and just draw an outline of my building. And there we go, a few clicks later, we have a full outline of our building and if we right click anywhere on the page away from materials, anything that we've built, we can come down all the way to the bottom and go show all in 3D. You can see there is a quick command there. You can also do control F5 if you want to, and it will show what we've started creating in 3D. So now you can see that elongated design here, the black slab we've created at the bottom, and that is about all we've done so far. What you'll see is this house is actually floating above this slab. So one or two things have gone wrong. Either this house is too high up, or this slab is too low down. And I think that the slab is too low down. So the quickest and easiest way to fix that is click on the slab, click on one of the black dots and come across to the drag tool. Then you can just drag it up. If you need to hold shift, you can run it along that parallel line and click in line with the ground floor plan. So now our slab sits on the edge of our timber frame walls that don't look like timber frame walls, but not important because we're gonna clad them with a very unique cladding material. Now we see our general structure, we know what's going on, we can come back into our ground floor plan. If I was doing an internal fit out on this plan, I think this would more than likely be the main kitchen, living, dining space. And then we'd have a master bedroom over here with potentially some wet area facilities, a laundry, a bathroom for everybody else. And then there would be a continuation of two more bedrooms, potentially a master ensuite, and just the spare bedroom as well, potentially even an office. So a very simple three by two cabin chalet design. So let's say I wanted this first wall the wrong way up to go from that section here to this section here, which would create our master bedroom or our spare bedroom, whatever we wanted there. It's a very large bedroom, so it'll most likely be our master. 
which means we would need some sort of ensuite down here. Then if we hold the control key and click once on this wall, it will quickly cut that entire area out. So now we have our master bedroom and potentially our ensuite in here. There's a number of ways to extend these walls across. We could hold Alt and activate the eyedropper tool so we can click on a wall and replicate those settings. Once again, clicking P to flip it around and doing something like that so we have an ensuite. We could also click on that wall once. Make sure it isn't grouped as a grouped element. So we can hold Alt and G to ungroup something. So if we hit escape and click on a wall again, you'll see it's ungrouped. But holding Alt and G again will quickly regroup that object so you don't have to worry about ungrouping objects in theory to actually ungroup them. And then we'll hold Alt again and use that eyedropper tool to replicate that interior wall. All the layers are correct. So if I click on an exterior wall, you'll see my wall settings change and I'll do the same over here. So then again, what we're gonna do is create potentially a secondary bathroom here that could be servicing as a laundry or anything in between. We'll start creating our second bedroom here and our additional bedroom over here. Now we have one bedroom, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, ensuite, bathroom. Now what we could do as well is extend this little wall across in line with that, giving it its own little private hallway. So then we could enter into here into a small little powder room, or if we wanted to, we click control again and delete that wall in the center. So we have a passage, a door into our master bedroom, an ensuite, secondary bedroom, an office, whatever we wanted. And then it would be a bit of an elongated hallway, but there'd be no views at the back, so we wouldn't have to worry about it. And this would be our kitchen, living and dining spaces. Overall, we have about nine and a half meters there. So that's relatively small for a kitchen, living, dining, but it would most likely be one main kitchenette along the back with your main entry coming through some sort of deck or our fresco. And then we would also have our main dining and living spaces in here. So now we have some interior floor plan guide that we can continue building upon. So if we click on our door tool, we can come into our door 24 objects. We can see ArcCAD has a number of different doors available for us to use. If I just click on this first door and then click override pen objects and change that orange to black because it looks hor horrible, I can then click on hinge door settings up the top and go through all of these settings to change what this door would look like. If you need a front view, you can click on that front item, come through all these settings, change them exactly how we like for an interior door. You can have all sorts of different patterns and styles. We'll just click on that one for the point of argument, change the handle. Let's go some nice handle with a lock and it puts it on directly there. So now we can come back in and start putting in doors into our design. So we have a couple doors here, we have a door into our ensuite, we have a door into our study here, we have a door into our master bedroom. We need our external doors, our windows and everything else. So if we go back into 3D, we can start seeing that we've created all those internal walls, we've modeled those doors. And if you don't know how I'm flying around like this, by holding shift and the middle scroll wheel, clicking it down, you can orbit around the actual project. You can also click this little explore man down the bottom and play it like a video game, WSD, moving around, looking around with your mouse, and then escape gets you out of that mode. We see that we understand our internals, we have our externals, and we can continue modeling. So if we come back into ground floor plan, we can actually go into our window tool, click on the window and open up the settings. You can also get into this by clicking command T. And let's just search for a sliding door. Now there are a number of sliding doors we can use. ArchiCAD has hundreds and hundreds of them. For this, let's just go with a typical four sash sliding door. I don't like the fact that it has this upper sash, so all we're gonna do is click left here on the shape and go none. So that completely removes that shape there. What I also wanna do is make that door to 400 high because it is definitely not tall enough for 1500 for a person to get through and drop the sill height to zero so it's flat on the ground. Same thing we did with doors coming into floor plan and section settings over clicking the overwrite pen objects and changing it from orange to black because it drives me crazy. Now I like to see opening lines on my window so I know where I'm actually going and what the doors are doing. So if we click on this drop down menu and come down to opening lines, 
we can go overwrite model view options and get our opening symbols on this door, which is great. So now we can just quickly click OK and start dropping in a couple doors where we think we're going to need them. So obviously this has multiple entries, multiple exits. We're going to use all three here. I'm thinking we're going to have a decked area here, a decked area over here, and then potentially 180 degrees from this side and multiple accesses from that master ensuite. This is a little bit narrow in my personal opinion. I'd probably make it anywhere from about three and a half to four meters. So in this instance, I'll stretch that out to four meters. What I'll do with this one, edge and drag it all the way across, do the same, drag it all the way across. So now we have roughly a four two sliding door, do the same on this side, do the same on that side. That's a five meter sliding panel door, which is probably a little bit too large, but it can still be done. Clicking back into a 3D, we can see we've started to create our glass elements for our house. If we jump down to footings, we're gonna go back into our footings layout where we created our slab. I wanna hold the Alt key and activate my eyedropper tool on top of this slab. And then I'm gonna to jump to the geometric rectangular method shape, click on the corner and snap onto this edge. I wanna make that about four meters wide. And then I'm gonna go into the settings by clicking Command or Control T and changing that to some sort of timber. We're gonna select the timber floor down here just to change the structural composition. It's gonna be a bit thicker than that. Let's go 190 for the purposes of this and then clicking OK. By clicking Control D and then tapping Control again, I can easily replicate that to the other side without having to do too much. We're gonna go back into our window tool, go back to our settings dialog box, change that to just straight up window. Now we've typed in window, I'm gonna actually just continue to type in window 24 because I know the window I want specifically. That is the window I wanna use in this instance. So if we come back to the top, go all the way back up to the start of this menu and work our way through, I wanna make this some sort of an awning window. So it's probably gonna be about 750 wide and potentially 800 high. It could be more, it could be less, depending on the window manufacturers in your country and how much glass you can actually put in a single pane. So if we come into this main sash setting in the opening type, we can change side hung to top hung, which top hung means it's gonna pivot from these points here and it's gonna be fixed at the top of the window and you're gonna be able to open it from that bottom point there. If we wanted to get creative, we could go in and do handles and all sorts of different bits and pieces, but we're not gonna worry about any of that. We're just gonna click OK. And then I'm gonna drop in two of these awning windows right here. I wanna do the same by clicking Alt and just dropping in two more of these windows over here for some ventilation and one long skinny window here. So I can use that window as it is and then click on it again, open up the settings to change what we have. By clicking on this list, I can come back to the opening settings and just changing that to a fixed glass panel I only want this to be about 700 millimeters high, but I do want it to be very, very long. I don't know how long it's gonna be in this instance, so I'm just gonna use the drag or move node tool here to make it as long as I need it to be. Now, if I click that, it has a sill of zero. I'm gonna move that up to 900 because that would be my bench height, which probably means these windows here also have a sill of zero. I don't want these windows to have a sill of zero, so I'm just gonna hold shift as I click through to select them all at once and change all their settings at once. I want them to have a seal of about 600, I think in this instance will look really, really good. We can probably replicate this window again once more here and once more on that side there to give that space some sort of natural ventilation. If we go back into our show 3D, we can see that we have all of this modeled, all of our house is starting to come together. We have this giant pane of glass that is probably gonna be a bit too expensive for this project. So if we click Control or Command and T, we'll open up the dialog settings again. And what we wanna do is find the setting that allows us to put a transom in the middle. So number of ways to do it, I find the easiest way to do it is to come back to sash type, no grid, HV grid, vertical one, horizontal and that way we've created that center break in the glass we can make that 50 millimeters thick and thickness 50 millimeters so it's actually a solid piece of framework aluminium 
timber, whatever the frame you're going with, and that makes that window significantly cheaper to create than having one giant pane of glass. Now, what we're gonna do is continue with our cladding of the external side. So if we go back into our ground floor plan and select all of our external walls. So now there's a number of ways you can do this. You can go in and get the Graphisoft accessories pack, which is completely free, I believe, for most Graphisoft users. But personally, I use CI tools because I find it a much more comprehensive package. It's an extra couple hundred bucks a year for the ArcCAD software, but I think it's a definitely a worthwhile plugin to get. So if we go to our coverings in CI tools and go to wall coverings, we can see our wall coverings panel open up. If I go back to the start of all the settings and work my way through it, we're gonna see all sorts of different settings. We wanna to move to the coverings section and these are the settings that you want to use. You want to go ribbed. If I flip that around 180, we can see that it's going vertically. And these are the settings you want to use to get this max line look we're talking about today. We want to go through these settings here. So take a screenshot, do whatever you need to do, pause the video, make sure you get those settings identical, make sure your cladding orientation is at 90 degrees. And then all we're going to do is go surface override, click on that and change it to some sort of black color. All we wanna do, and then we click OK, and you'll see it starts creating this offset of that wall. We wanna drag our mouse to the outside of the wall because that's where we want our cladding to go. So we just click on the outside and it will automatically create our cladding. Now, if I go back to our 3D, this is where it gets really cool. So now we have this extremely nice black ribbed metal cladding that is an extremely expensive finished look, but it is an incredible product at the end of the day. So it's starting to look a lot better and it's starting to look really unique and architectural. So now what I, I notice is all my window frames are the wrong color and just doesn't work with the design. So if we click on one window, click Control F to open up our find and select, then we can click our copy settings for that window. I'm looking to replace all the windows, so I don't want to go in and create different criteria. Just click the select item and it will select all our windows in the project. Click Control T, Command T, whatever system you're on. Open up the window 24 settings and go to the settings where we change our model attributes. All we want to do is scroll down and change that to the same black color you selected before. So clicking through all of them individually, black, black, black. Now all our window frames have changed to black and we have a much better, much cleaner look. So overall our design started to come together, but obviously if we left it like this, it would rain, it would get destroyed. We need some sort of roof structure. So if we come across to our roof plan up the top, double click that, and then we're gonna right click and show as trace reference on our ground floor plan so we know exactly where our walls are. If we come across to our roof tool and in this instance, I'm gonna use the multi-plane geometry and then split it, break it apart to do what I wanna do. So if we zoom in to one of our walls, we're just gonna trace around all our walls. So now I've traced around all the walls going on that exterior edge and clicking on the final bit. What I wanna do is click again on that roof structure. You can see it's created this overall roof shell. This is the roof we've created that looks very basic. It looks like your generic average house. So we're gonna go back into our roof. We're gonna change our overhang to zero. We don't want an overhang on this and we want a much higher pitch. So let's go 30 degrees for now and see how that works. So if we click enter, come back into our 3D model, we can see that's already started to change. So now this is still looking very basic. If we come back into our roof structure, right click on our roof and then go split into single pane roofs and then go split anyway, don't worry about that warning. It's just telling you it's gonna be a mess. We have to ungroup our roof by clicking Alt and G, which gives us the ability to click on one roof plane instead of all of them at once. So Alt and G, we can click on one. If Alt and G isn't selected, you have all of them. So we're gonna delete that roof. We're gonna delete that roof and we're gonna delete that section of the roof. Now what we're gonna do is click on that panel of the roof, click on the end node and drag it in line with the edge. 
We'll do the exact same for that side and the same for these two roofs over here. Now it's critical that this node aligns with this node, otherwise when we start doing our roofing materials, it won't line up and you're gonna have some problems. So, so now all we have to do is go back into our 3D layer and you're gonna see that roof has changed. All of a sudden we're starting to get that cabin look. It's starting to look a lot cooler, a lot nicer, but I still think the roof pitch is a little low. So I'm gonna click on one, go Alt G, open up my settings and change that pitch to about 35 degrees. Now we have a very steep pitch roof and it's starting to look quite nice. I'm gonna ungroup all these walls, select that wall, this wall and this last wall over here that are all at the ends of these gable roofs. Click on the edge, go to my stretch height tool and stretch it just past the tip of that roof. It's gonna do absolutely nothing at the start, but that's okay. We still have all three of those walls highlighted. So we're gonna right click anywhere in the project while everything's still highlighted, go to connect, go to solid element operations, and then we're gonna click on our roof. Quickly clicking Alt G to select all of them. We're gonna add that as our operator, change the subtract with an upwards extrusion, and click execute. Now nothing's changed again for a very simple reason because our cladding protrudes past our wall edge and our roof does not. So, so now what we wanna to do to make sure we can crop this roof here is go back into our roof plan and offset all of these edges 110 mil. So we simply do that by clicking on any of the roofs, clicking on the edge line and going through one by one and extending it 110 mil. So now I've completed the offset of all edges, if I go back into 3D, we'll see we've cropped that cladding perfectly with the roof line. So now we're gonna jump back into our roof, click on the roof, select all the roof sheetings, go back into our CI tools, coverings, and go roof coverings this time. So the same way we wrote down all those settings for the max line cladding around the walls, we're gonna come back into our roof, go ribbed, and we're gonna change these settings to match the other settings. Okay, the one thing you have to be careful of is the simple fact that in the roof and the wall claddings, these are in different orders. So if you wanna screenshot this again, or pause this video to get these settings correct in this order for the roof sheeting, go ahead, get it right. Okay, so now if we click okay, we've seen that we've replicated that cladding and it lines up with the edge of our roof. What it doesn't do though is our roof sheeting doesn't go all the way up to the edge because we've extended it that little bit too far. But first of all, we're gonna change these gutters so we can actually connect those wall and roof detail together. So what we do is we open up the settings of the roof, we go into the cladding, we jump all the way down to gutters and change our quarter round to our parapet. So our parapet will create an internal gutter. It'll probably be quite deep because it's quite small. So let's go 180 gutter for the purpose of this and click OK. Now you'll see that that gutter has been created. Now we need this roof to sit higher up because that gutter isn't working. So if we open up our settings for the roof, go to our framing options and change 45 to maybe 90 in this instance, we can see that gutter goes all the way past now, which is exactly what we're trying to achieve. All we have to do now is come back into our roof settings, open up our layers by going Control L and taking off this roof cover. The roof cover is now dedicated onto ArchiCAD layer. We're just gonna change it to something a bit different. So we'll call it Shell General for now. And if we go Control L, move down to Shell General, turn that off, go OK, that disappears and we no longer have our roof shell activated. If I click on our roof overall, I can go back in and subtract 110 mil from what I originally added previously on these sides. So we don't need it on the sides, we only need it on the edges where the front of the building meets the new gable ends that we created before. So we only need 110 mil offset here, 110 there and 110 there. Now if I go back in to my 3D view, we're gonna see all these errors coming up because we're not cropping in line with that roof anymore. But that's okay, we're gonna deal with that in a minute. We're gonna come across and select one of these walls internally here. What I wanna do is align this to the edge. So if I find this internal wall here, I can find out exactly how tall that wall needs to be for this to look like it's aligning. So from a distance, it won't align perfectly because 
the timber roof doesn't allow that. So we're gonna extend that wall just to about here. And then what we're also gonna do is click on that roof covering and extend the roof covering 35 millimeters just on one side, which is our framing structure. So now you can see we've created that secret gutter that comes down on the edge of this side of the building and we just need to get rid of that section of the wall. Now, if these corners do occur to you, there is a very simple way to get rid of them. We can go Control L and hide our roof shell to be able to do this properly. So we just hide our roof shell there. We're gonna click on that covering, click on those two roof sections there, right click, connect, trim to roof element, and click OK, and they're gone. We're gonna do the same on this side. One, two, right click, connect, trim. Okay, gone. Run around this side. Click, one, two, right click, connect, trim, gone. There we go, we can turn on our roof right now and we can see our almost finished product looking absolutely incredible. So now we have this modern country barn that is wrapped with this unique black metal cladding and it lines up with these secret gutters as well. And that's pretty much it guys, there's nothing more to it. We've created a unique cabin that has some concealed gutters. It has the unique metal cladding wrapping all the way around. It has all those window and door penetrations and it is a unique cabin that you can use for your portfolio, for your projects, whatever you wanna do. We would then usually take this into twin motion to create an even better render of this, but we're not gonna showcase that in this video today. If that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe. I do make those videos from time to time, but that's all we have time for today. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button just down there, and don't forget about that like button. The like button helps this video with the YouTube algorithm and it makes sure more and more people can see videos like this and we can continue growing this community. Anyway, that's all from me. So like always, I will see you next Monday.